So about every five years or so, I like to just do a complete upgrade of my PC. And I'm not the build your own PC kind of guy. Obviously, if you want to be cost effective, you just want to get all the different components separately and put it together yourself. And I do want to try that someday, definitely. But with my current workload and needs, I just don't have the time to build my own PC or the patience for now. Again, I'll try it one day. So I tend to go with pre-built PCs, and there's literally one brand that I've used since the start of my YouTube career like a decade ago, and that brand is Mangear. Uh, this is literal me in 2013 with a Mangear PC that I bought at the time, and then here is me in 2017 unboxing a Mangear PC I purchased then, and this is the PC that I've been using these last five years, which has served me well. All the content you've enjoyed in the last five years or so is courtesy of this hunk of metal and silicon. My first Mangear PC, actually, I remember it was my MCN that got it for me when I was just starting out YouTubing because I couldn't afford my own PC. I was working off of this crappy laptop, and so I gave him like a higher percentage of my revenue until I paid off the PC and stuff like that, and the PC they happened to get me was Mangear, and since then I've just kept buying Mangear PCs because it was familiar and reliable. So after all this time, I figured, you know, why fix what ain't broken? And now fast forward to 2022, and I could definitely feel my 2017 PC's components needing an upgrade. I could, you know, feel the PC slowing down during load intensive work. I could feel aspects of its hardware just not holding up or not meeting my requirements in this current day and age. And at this stage, enough components needed an upgrade where I figured instead of upgrading individual components, I should just like go balls to the walls with future proofing a brand new PC from scratch, go with a pre-built, and not to mention that I do need a secondary PC in my studio for external recording and streaming and stuff like that. So it all kind of worked out in terms of the kind of setup that I'm going for. And so with that, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to show you guys my new computer. This is me right here unboxing my new Main Gear PC in 2022. This was a unit provided to me by Main Gear for review purposes, one that I was happy to receive and check out given my long-standing history with them. This is definitely the biggest PC I've ever owned so far. There was, <laughs> as you can see here, definitely a bit of a struggle to get this thing out of the box by myself. This is what Main Gear calls their Rush chassis, which is significantly bigger than the Vibe chassis that I had for my old computer. Here's a size comparison with my old PC. And one of the advantages of this bigger chassis is that, you know, with GPUs getting bigger and with me potentially wanting to upgrade my GPU into the latest and greatest, I just want to make sure that I future proof the internal volume of my chassis so that when I do switch out components like GPUs, I can feel comfortable doing so without risking running out of space inside. Not to mention more internal volume means just better airflow, which is better for cooling. But yeah, my old PC, the Vibe chassis, sat at 8 inches horizontal, 18 and a half inches vertical or tall, and then 17 inches in depth. With a new PC, we're looking at a significant size increase. 11 and 3 fourths inches horizontal, 20 and 1 fourth inches vertical, and 18 and a half inches deep. So that's a heck of a lot more volume. And then alongside the PC, the package also included this bag that has all of the relevant additional cables and components that I might need for later, as well as this Asus M.2 card that occupies an SLI slot. It's called the Asus ROG Hyper M.2 Expansion Card. And basically it enables greater storage expansion. What I did was I took my M.2 SSD from my old computer, which had all of my Steam games in it. I put that into this Asus M.2 card that I then inserted into my new computer's SLI slot. And boom, just like that, all my Steam games were up and running in my new PC. Just had to download Steam on the new computer and it just picked up all of the games that were installed on it. So I've been using this PC for a few weeks now. It's been my editing device, and I figured I'd just like walk you through it a little bit, how it fares compared to my old PC specs, and just show you aspects of my setup for those who are curious. Now, Mangear did send this PC to me as a review unit, and as part of that, you may have noticed that they went ahead and added some unique cosmetic customization to it. On one of the panels, you can see the Yong logo with this cool, like, techie pattern in the corners, which I really like the way it turned out. 
So this is actually something that Main Gear offers as a purchase option. They can do custom paint jobs for the chassis exterior. A bit of fun fact is that the CEO of Main Gear, Wallace Santos, who I actually met a few years back, has a background in like car tuning and car customization. So the kind of paint that's used for this chassis, this customization, was actually automotive paint. And I mean, it really shows it's got that automotive sheen to it and the print of the logo and the design is really high quality. Now, obviously, this is like way extra. This isn't going to be for everyone. You would be shelling out an additional few hundred dollars, but some people do like cosmetic customization of their devices. It's why, you know, people buy special editions of consoles that maybe they already own and whatnot. So if you're that kind of person who cares about the cosmetic aspects of what they own and feel good about things tailoring to their visual preferences, then this kind of cosmetic customization, I think, is cool to have as just an option if you have that extra money to burn. Also on the exterior of this chassis are these front buttons. From top to bottom, we have power, reset, and then we got some ports, USB, USB-C, a headphone jack, a microphone jack. And then all the way at the bottom, you've got these two buttons that allow you to set the lighting scheme of this strip on the front of this chassis. You can kind of flip those around and customize it to your liking. And then on the back, you've got even more ports, a combination of USB-A's, USB-C's, LAN, HDMI, audio ports. I mean, everything you want is here. Now, what you buy a PC for ultimately is, of course, the interior hardware that runs the machine. And here are the specs for my new PC. The motherboard is an Asus ROG Maximus Z690 Hero DDR5. The graphics card, the GPU, is an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti 12GB GDDR6X. The processor, the CPU, is an Intel Core i9 12900K 16 cores, 3.2 gigahertz. That can be boosted to 5.2 gigahertz. I've got 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 5200 megahertz memory. That's two 32 gigabyte sticks. And then for storage, I've got an M.2 NVMe SSD, a two terabyte Samsung 980 Pro M2 Gen 4 NVMe SSD. And what's cool about this particular chassis and unit is that it comes pre-wired with four hard drive bays, which is important to me as someone who obviously captures a lot of gameplay footage and whatnot, and maybe wants to save that for another day, I want to be able to have as much storage as possible for that footage. So I went ahead and separately bought two 20 terabyte hard disk drives that I screwed onto the custom tray here that then I easily inserted into the computer and boom, it was up and running. I love the ease of that given how much storage and switching storage in and out is important for the kind of work that I do with my PC. It was just very easy to get that up and running. And then for the power supply, it's a Main Gear branded 1200 watts ignition. The cooling is also Main Gear branded 360 millimeter liquid cooling. The fans also Main Gear branded. And the total cost of this PC is $6,365. But keep in mind that specs wise, I went full out to really future proof this thing for the kind of content creation that I do and the kind of gaming that I do. Most people are not gonna require the kinds of specs that I have here. Most people can't afford to kind of go down a level when it comes to GPU and CPU and memory and whatnot. They also don't have to go for the custom paint job that also adds a couple hundred dollars on top of everything. But also just in general, pre-built PCs are gonna be more expensive. Again, if you want to be as cost effective as possible, build your own PC. But for those who, you know, don't have the time, patience, or the expertise for that, you can buy pre-built where the people who know what they're doing take care of building the PC properly. Now let's compare this to my old PC whose motherboard was the Asus ROG Maximus X Hero with wireless. The processor, the CPU of my old PC is an Intel Core i7 8700K. You can see it's a few generations old now. 3.8 gigahertz that can be boosted to 4.7 gigahertz. Turbo six core CPU with hyper threading, 12 megabytes L3 cache. And then it's got this main gear branded 240 millimeter super cooler cooling solution. In terms of RAM, we're looking at 32 gigabytes of HyperX Fury DDR4. That was comprised of four eight gigabyte sticks instead of the more efficient two 32 gigabyte sticks that leaves the space open for two additional sticks that would allow me to upgrade my RAM to 128 gigabytes if I so desired in the new PC. I definitely found that 32 gigabytes was not enough given how many Chrome tabs I've opened while I'm editing and all these things that take up a lot of memory. So I went for 64 gigabytes. And then the graphics card, the GPU of my old PC, 
came with an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, 11 gigabytes of GDDR5X with G-Sync. Now, I did eventually upgrade that to an RTX 3080, not Ti, just regular RTX 3080, and that certainly helped boost the performance and helped give this unit a longer lifespan, and it's still plenty powerful but for my current editing needs, I just needed better everything else alongside the GPU, which is why I got this new PC. The power supply for that was significantly less at 850 watts. And this was in main gear brand. This was EVGA Supernova P280 Platinum Certified Fully Modular PSU. As for the main drive, it came with a 1 terabyte Samsung 850 Evo SSD. And in the smaller chassis were two additional hard disk drive bays. Those were not pre-wired. Those were not plug and play. So I had to, you know, open up my PC and like really set everything up. So it was definitely more of a hassle to get some HDDs in there. Nothing unmanageable, just not as plug and play as it is with the new chassis, this new PC that I got. And my old PC did come with a six terabyte HDD. And then on top of that, I purchased separately a 14 terabyte hard disk drive that I added on top of that. And the total cost of my old PC as it came without the additional 14 terabytes of HDD storage space and with a 1080 Ti rather than the 3080 Ti that I bought separately and upgraded later on, the cost for that old PC was $3,567.44 compared to my new PC's $6,365. My new PC is definitely more future-proofed than my old PC was even at the time when I bought it back in end of 2017. So I suspect this thing's gonna keep me going for quite a while. And this time I do plan to, you know, upgrade my components individually more so I don't have to keep focusing on just getting a brand new PC every couple of years. And something else that you get with a pre-built PC is just like cable management and neatness. I suck at cable management and uh, I, could learn to be better at it, but again, I just don't have the time or patience for it currently. And so to have a team that knows what they're doing and ha know how to wire everything and how to run cables properly so that everything's just super organized and neat inside, that's another advantage of just having someone else who is better at that stuff take care of an aspect that maybe you'd be messier at. And another advantage of a pre-built PC is the customer service. Uh, Main Gear does have really good customer service in my experience, having owned Main Gear PCs, again, for the past decade or so. There have been moments where my PC, you know, shut down and wouldn't turn on for some reason, and I'd call them up and they'd be very efficient at resolving and troubleshooting those issues. That's gotten me out of trouble a few times where, you know, I had something big to do the next day and I needed my computer to work today call them up, they had my PC back up and running and whatnot. And that's something that I wouldn't have if I made my own PC. I'd have to troubleshoot the PC myself, see where I went wrong. Main Gear knows exactly how they built the PCs that I got from them. And so they're able to troubleshoot a lot more efficiently. And just having that extra level of support as someone who isn't, you know, like I'm relatively tech savvy, but I'm not like go deep dive into debugging my computer and troubleshooting my computer kind of guy. Having that extra level of technical support is just an ease of mind that goes well with just uh, my current schedule and the kind of work that I do. All right, so with that out of the way, I'd like to present some performance metrics, starting with how this thing performs when editing. There's definitely a noticeable difference between my old PC and the new PC when it comes to how long it takes to export a video. So for example, I took this 15 minute video that I made for my channel and used the same video and exported them on both PCs using Premiere Pro with the exact same settings. This 15 minute video on my old PC took three minutes and 15 seconds to export, whereas on the new PC, it took significantly less at just two minutes and 20 seconds. And the old PC is helped by the fact that I replaced the 1080 Ti with the RTX 3080, but the new PC with the 3080 Ti and the newer generation CPU and whatnot, it's just, I mean, yeah, it makes for a significant difference, especially when you're dealing with longer videos. So I took some Elden Ring gameplay that I captured for my review of that game. I took the exact same one hour chunk and exported that on both PCs using Premiere Pro with the exact same settings. We're talking about 1440p footage that I shrunk down to 1080. Exactly one hour of that footage took my old PC 16 minutes and 30 seconds to fully export, whereas my new PC only took 10 minutes 
and 11 seconds. It only took two thirds the time that it did on my old PC. Very happy with the results. And just in general, when I'm editing, it does feel smoother, more responsive, less stutters and freezes as I'm editing, just smoother playback and previews of videos and timelines that I'm working on. On top of export saving more time, the fact that the newer components just make editing smoother means I save a lot of time editing as well because those few seconds you spend waiting for a stutter or a freeze to undo itself or for playback to start when you know the computer is frozen for like a second or two all that stuff does add up to a substantial amount of time and just foregoing a lot of that just allows me to make videos edit videos and upload videos faster and more efficiently and then beyond that you've got gaming performance and uh, yeah this thing uh, shreds through gaming. Now, I'm not going to go through performances of weaker games. Obviously, those games are going to run flawlessly on this thing. Instead, I'm going to show you one game that people often use as a benchmark for how powerful a PC is, and that's Cyberpunk 2077. I ran this game at 2560 by 1440 resolution because that's the uh, resolution of my monitor, and at 1440p with ray tracing ultra settings, basically the max settings. I was getting 75 frames per second average. The lowest I ever saw the frame rates dip into was 65 frames per second in some of the more visually busy areas, but I've also seen the frame rate go as high as 90 frames per second in less busy areas and interior locations and whatnot. And then you combine that with my monitor being 165 hertz with 4 milliseconds response time, and I mean, we're looking at very good looking and very smooth feeling and very responsive feeling gameplay. And then there is emulation performance, which this unit absolutely tears through. So I booted up Zelda Breath of the Wild on Simu, the Wii U emulator, at 2560 by 1440 resolution and with the frame rate unlocked via mod, this game ran consistently at over 100 frames per second outdoors. I was looking at 100 to 130, 140 frames per second, depending on how busy the screen was outdoors. And indoors, the game had no trouble running at the max frame rate that my monitor supports, 165 frames per second. It was the smoothest feeling Breath of the Wild gameplay and the most responsive feeling Breath of the Wild gameplay I'd ever experienced. I also tried some graphically demanding games on Yuzu, the Switch emulator. At 2x native resolution, Kirby and the Forgotten Land was running a flawless 60 frames per second with a 60 frames per second mod. And Astral Chain, which is pretty visually intensive, also running flawlessly at 60 frames per second with a 60 FPS mod. Something else that I've always wanted to try was run Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater 3D, the 3DS version, at 60 frames per second using the Citra emulator. And man, does this PC deliver at five times native resolution with the 60 FPS mod installed. I was running a flawless 60 frames per second with what I believe gameplay wise to be the best version of Snake Eater because you can like crouch and aim in third person and whatnot. It's just got these nice little gameplay additions that modernize the gameplay a bit more. So this was the version that I was one day hoping to see run at 60 frames per second. And with Citra emulation being where it is and with this hardware that's way overkill for this kind of emulation. Yeah, I was getting flawless 60 frames per second with a few dips here and there in more graphically intensive cutscenes where I saw it dip into like the 50s, but for the most part, pretty much flawless 60 FPS, especially during gameplay. And then speaking of Metal Gear, I tried running Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots on the RPC S3 PS3 emulator. And man, this is the first time I even tried to do that. Holy crap, has PS3 emulation come far, and man, does this PC run MGS4 well. At 1080p resolution, I was mostly getting 60 frames per second, with some dips into the mid-50s, though it can also dip into the, like, the high 30s to mid-40s when there's a lot going on, like when there's a bunch of explosions in the battlefield, then you'll see the frame rates dip. But for the most part, this is 60 frames per second MGS4, which on PS3 ran at 30 frames per second with dips into below 30 FPS. So, I mean, to feel Metal Gear Solid 4 running this smoothly for the first time was just freaking eye-opening. I'm definitely going to be playing through the entire game like this. Now, with MGS4, the emulation isn't perfect, so you might see some graphical glitches here and there, but for the most part, it's 
pretty playable on PC with these kinds of specs. It's mostly very smooth. Definitely feels better than playing on the PS3, again, minus some of those graphical glitches. Just, uh, it, it's really incredible to see how far PS3 emulation has come. Now, as far as how the cooling solution fares after gaming, well, first of all, when the PC sitting idly, the CPU cores are sort of in the mid 30s to low 40s usually, and the GPU temperatures are in the 50s to 60s. And then once I load up a game like Cyberpunk 2077, the CPU cores tend to sit pretty comfortably in sort of the low 60s. And then the GPU, its overall temperature tends to sit in the high 70s, though the memory itself tends to sit in the 90s. I have not seen the performance of this device suffer or throttle anything crazy like that. The games run fairly well for a long amount of time. As for the fans, I'll occasionally hear them kick in for like a second or two pretty hard, and then it mellows out into a comfortable hum that fades into the background when doing uh, load-intensive stuff like gaming or editing. And then when sitting idly, you can barely hear the fan, so noise-wise, the computer doesn't emit a whole lot of it which is great in an environment where I'm obviously doing things like recording and whatnot. So that's a big plus for me. And this finally brings us to a quick tour of my setup. You can see right here, I've got three monitors. These are Asus monitors, 165 hertz, four milliseconds response time. I've got three of them set up like so, connected to my new computer, which you can see right here is shining brightly and beautifully. It's connected to a Focusrite that is connected to the headset that I use, the uh, Audio-Technica broadcast headset that served me well over the years. I've got some controller stuff. That one right there controls audio. That's obviously a PlayStation 5 controller. I've got some more controllers up there alongside these two things that are for my Razer mouse that I got recently. You can take off the side panel here and substitute it with these based on what you need. So for, you know, web browsing, this is pretty good. But if you want to play like an MMO, this could be really good for that, etc. So these are really nice. And then I've actually got two other mice. This one I use with my new computer alongside the Razer. And the reason I like this one is because this one you can unlock the scroll wheel so that it scrolls infinitely. It paves the road for just faster editing and faster web scrolling. And then on this monitor here, that is now connected to my old PC, which I've set up over there, connects to this. So the way I access that is I go back here and switch to HDMI input, like so. And I believe my, my computer might be asleep right now, okay. So I can use the secondary keyboard. This is for my old PC, this is for my new PC. So old PC keyboard, boom, you can see right here, I can input whatever I want. And then this uh, Topra keyboard that has more of that vintage look is for my new PC right here. And then for my old PC, I use this third mouse right here, which also, unlocks uh, its scroll wheel. You can actually see the grooves here and then it is actually scrolling. It's kind of hard to tell. And I can take this mouse and use it to move the mouse of the old PC. So I've got both my old PC and my new PC readily accessible through these three monitors. So that way with the second PC now, if I need to record gameplay through it or if I need to stream through it, I can do that right here with the keyboard and this mouse. And then I've got these two mice for my new PC, depending on what my purposes are with them. Got a stream deck here, we've got this uh, HDMI splitter. I use this little controller here. Basically, this thing right here has got four inputs and two outputs. The inputs are consoles, which I'll show you in a bit, like PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, you name it. And I can decide using this controller what uh, input goes to what output. One output goes to this monitor, another output goes to a capture card, and I can decide which uh, console outputs to what output, and that's just super handy to have. And now if we loop back around, you can see what the setup looks like on the other side. You can see the consoles here connected to that HDMI splitter. I've got a PlayStation 4, specifically for Bloodborne and PT, Bloodborne 60 FPS mod. I've got Xbox Series X and X, and of course, PlayStation 5. I've got an audio receiver here connected to the subwoofer down here alongside this speaker setup one and then two, oh, I need to dust that off, and then three over there, and then back there I actually got two uh, speakers hidden. So this is a 5.1 surround sound setup. And then you got the studio lights up here, which I turn on with just the flick of my foot, like that. I have them connected to 
this uh, power strip right here so I can just easily turn it on and off without having to reach up there. And then smack in the middle here is uh, the way I mounted the camera that I used to film myself. There's a Gorilla tripod. Uh, not the best way to prop this up, but this is the setup that I had when I first moved into this apartment. Why well, fix why well, I'm broken, though I could get a better stand that could prop this up in a better way, but this works. And then looping back around again, here is the old computer. That is now my secondary PC connected to that monitor. And yeah, I can uh, go in here and make it a triple monitor setup again for my new PC, like so. And boom, voila, this is my current setup. It's all very makeshift. It's nothing fancy because I am living in an apartment and I don't want to like ruin this apartment. You know, when I get a house of my own that I can really customize to my liking, I'll definitely uh, kind of go a little hard with uh, establishing my studio. But for now, you know, this works just fine. And uh, with this new computer and its powerful components, I'll be able to work even more efficiently than before. So excited to see what kind of content I can make from uh, this setup. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything you need to know about my new PC. And this was a glimpse of my current setup in this apartment. I hope you had some fun with this behind the scenes look. And I hope this was informative for those who maybe are looking to maximize their PC at the level that I did to future proof it for the kind of work and gaming that I do. And appreciate all of your support for my content. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I do and be able to own PCs of this magnitude and be able to do the kind of coverage that I do. Uh, I owe you guys a lot and um, yeah, excited to see what the future holds and what this uh, baby over here will uh, be able to do for me when it comes to future content and videos. So look forward to those and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.